Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to our guests in worship. We're glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. Welcome those who join us through our radio broadcast each week and those who are joining us through Facebook Live. We are in the season of Easter, a season of rejoicing of, over the resurrection of Christ our Lord. And our theme during this season is Be Not Afraid, as you can see on the cover of your, cover of your bulletin. It's the words that the angels spoke to the women when they came to the tomb on Easter morning. It's the words that Jesus spoke to them as they greeted him on the way. And so we carry that theme through this season of, of Easter. A few announcements before we begin our worship today. On pages six and seven, you'll see a two full pages of lots of things that are going to be taking place in the near future and, and in the upcoming weeks. But I draw your attention to today, we have a Phoenix backpack packing event taking place following worship. It's in the fellowship hall, uh, and everything's all set up and organized, and so if you would like to participate in that, just come on down and join on in. We're packing 110 bags for the month of May. That'll go to students at Phoenix Elementary. And uh, let's see, Pastor Colonel, how many bags have we packed this year? 990 so far this year. And so uh, we've been feeding children in our neighborhood school, and uh, it's a, a true blessing to participate. You'll note under congregational news, we have a baptism following worship this morning. Caden Benjamin Pribula, son of Benjamin and Brenna Pribula. Sponsors are for Caden, are Nick and Lisa Pribula. And so we celebrate with them on this happy day. As a community of faith, we also offer sympathy and our prayerful support to the families of Sue Ellen Bateman, Lila Jane Nelson, and Ginny Davis, whose services were this past week. And we continue to remember them in our prayers. The last day of Sunday school fall uh, until fall is May 14th, so uh, note that on your calendar that's coming up uh, sooner than we can imagine, because tomorrow is May 1st, and so we're moving along in the calendar. You'll note that next Sunday is an informational meeting uh, in the lounge taking place at 1130 after worship with Cynthia Shaw, who's the executive director for Grand Forks Global Friends Coalition. And Grand Forks will soon be receiving refugees through Church World Services. There'll be 17 people arriving in Grand Forks. And United Lutheran has been asked by Global Friends Coalition if we would be interested in forming a team of volunteers to assist in the resettlement and helping them become acclimatized to our community. And I'm so grateful that they're coming at this time of the year rather than some other time of the year. You'll also note uh, a number of planting events and other things listed in our uh, calendar. Please take your bulletins home with you so you know about what is coming up in our calendar uh, here at United. I believe that's all the announcements I'll make at this time, and I would invite you now to turn to page two in your bulletin to our order for thanksgiving for baptism. And would you please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as people of God's new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, in mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus. In baptismal waters, our old self is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Wash, Wash away our sin, and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Grant hope where despair prevails. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 369 in your red hymnals. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us join together in our prayer of the day. O God, o God our, our shepherd, good shepherd, you know, know your sheep by name, and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice, that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
The first lesson comes from Acts chapter 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. God. We'll read Psalm 23 responsively. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. It is a credit to you if being aware of God you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God. Word of life. Be to God. If you are a child worshiping with us today, you can come on up to the steps for the children's sermon. Don't be shy. Today, we are going to play a game. So it's going to be very fun. You should come up. All right. So this is, this is the game we're playing. Now, some of you might have a little tr struggle with this because you're new. That's OK. We want you to play. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to stand up, and you are going to turn around, and you are going to close your eyes. And there's someone who is going to say something. And we're going to try to see if we can use our listening ears to recognize the voice of the person, OK? So no peeking. Shut your eyes. OK, I'm going to the first person. Hey, Mac, happy birthday. All right, does anyone recognize that voice of that person? You didn't recognize Matt? Any? 
guesses? Okay, we'll try another one. Oh, we have a question. Um, then you're going to use your best guess. All right, we have another person. Hello, happy birthday, Mac. <laughs> okay, so we got we have Pastor Peter. You got that one. Okay, I have one more. Hi, Violet. Does anyone know that person's name? Okay, you can turn around and you can sit down. So the three people that were speaking were Gretchen, raise your hand, our music teacher, Pastor Peter, and Jim Woolman, way back there. He's actually the president of our council. I thought he has a distinguished voice, I feel like. Anyway, so did you find that game difficult? Yeah. That's right. It's hard to know people's names or recognize their voice when we don't know them. Nice, okay. So it's hard to recognize people's voices when we don't know them. And if it was maybe our mom or our dad or our grandparent, you could, you definitely know their voice, right? Because you hear it all the time. I'm wondering, what is an animal? Well, does anyone have pets? I don't. Okay, so when you call their name, do they come to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, Ideally, a dog would come to you. I'm not sure about a cat. Um, another, so what, I, what I'm getting at is another animal that knows the name of their caretaker is a sheep. Now imagine with me a pasture full of sheep. Okay, they're roaming around, roaming around, but when the shepherd, the person who cares for and, and loves their sheep, says the name of their sheep or, sheep, come on, they come to the shepherd, okay? Because they know the voice of their caretaker. And they say bad. And they say bad. That's true. <laughs> so in the Bible, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And he told his followers that they are like sheep. And like a shepherd, Jesus cares for us and protects us and finds us when we are lost. And Jesus reminds us, do not be afraid, and promises us that he's going to be with us through, through all of life. And so, as followers of Jesus, we click on our listening ears. Do you ever do that? Like, click them. That's what my niece does. We click on our listening ears, and we try to listen to the voice of Jesus. Now, I wonder what the voice of Jesus sounds like. Because I'm not sure if we, I mean, we can't see Jesus, right? So we just kind of have to imagine what he would sound like. But I think, I know, that his voice would be full of kindness and of love and compassion and welcome. Because that's who Jesus is. And so we hear Jesus' voice in stories of the Bible and in worship songs, and in prayer, and maybe through the people that we love, and through the people who are in need. So Jesus is all around us, and I wonder how you will go about the rest of your week and really try to listen for the voice of Jesus. Will you pray with me? You can fold your hands, close your eyes. All right. Loving God, we give you thanks for the people who care for us, and love us, and shepherd us, Give us eyes and ears to notice you around us. Help us to remember every moment of every day that you are with us. Wrap your arms around those who might feel sad or hurt today. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming up. I hope that your pet is trained to learn the name. <laughs> Please rise for the gospel. Even from death is sad. 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them, Again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All those who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. <clears throat> Well, it's been a hard week, beloved people of United Lutheran Church. Can we just say that out loud to one another? This week we commended to God's eternal care two saints of this congregation, Sue Ellen Bateman and Lila Jane Nelson, two people who each in their own unique way were a witness to us of faith and love and used their gifts to enrich our lives and this community of faith. It's been a hard week, beloved, and our hearts ache for Katie and Alice as they mourn the death of their daughter and mother, Jenny Davis, and your hearts ache also for people in your lives who are carrying <coughs> such heavy things. It's been a hard week, beloved, and many of you are carrying grief that seems too big to bear. The loss of someone or something near and dear to you has created this gaping hole in your life, and you realize nothing will ever fill that space in the same way. It's been a hard week, beloved. And in the face of all that we grieve and carry, we can wonder if we have enough if we are enough, if our faith is enough to see us through. And so it was a relief to me when I saw that Psalm 23 was among the Bible readings this morning. I thought, there you are, my old familiar friend. This is the most well-known and beloved of all the Psalms. I wonder how many of you think that you could say it from memory. Don't worry, I'm not gonna quiz you. <laughs> Some weeks, if we can be honest again, the Bible readings seem to bring so much confusion and challenge to our lives, but Psalm 23, this is a place we can rest. Here is the God who leads us to still waters and to green pastures. This is a psalm of sustaining comfort and strength. As a pastor, I've noticed how often as death nears someone, they reach out for the promise of this psalm. At the end of our lives, so many ordinary concerns fade away and we perceive or our perception is heightened to see something more. We see the beauty and the extraordinary power of the ties that bind us. We see what is of eternal value. We see that we are wrapped in love that will not let us go. This psalm proclaims boldly, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the word of God here creates what it proclaims. We can rest knowing that ultimately we have nothing to fear because God is with us. 
In life, as in death, we are never, never outside of God's presence and providing. It's now the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. It's almost May, the snow is almost melted. And this Sunday, this fourth Sunday after Easter is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And in John, our gospel reading for today, the 10th chapter, there is a shepherd also. But unlike Psalm 23, this passage is layered and not easy to understand. In just 10 verses of packed metaphor, John gives us sheep, a sheepfold, a shepherd, a gate, a gatekeeper, a pasture, a sneaky band of thieves and bandits, and an even more sinister group of smooth-tongued strangers. At one point, the gospel writer just comes right out and says, Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. No kidding. It's tempting to look at a passage like this and think that it's some kind of code that we're supposed to crack or the preacher is supposed to crack for you. But the whole of scripture is not a code that needs to be cracked, but it is a revealing to us of who God is. And this week, as I looked through this dense passage, I kept landing on one image, Jesus as the gate. Now we're accustomed to Jesus the Good Shepherd, but Jesus the gate? But Jesus says not once, but two times clearly that he is the gate. And that repetition means that this is something that we're supposed to pay attention to. It's interesting that Jesus says, I am the gate. He doesn't say I'm the wall or the barrier or the enclosure or the dividing line, but I am the gate, the opening, the passageway. Most of us tend to think of gates as limiting. We imagine child gates or maybe puppy training gates. United's daycare center uses gates and even still we sometimes have a runner. <laughs> gates we imagine keep us safe, like a prison gate or gated communities. But what, what if Jesus is a different kind of gate, a gate that opens out instead of simply closes us in. I think that when we feel fearful, our tendency is to close down and shut the gates of our lives and our families and our community and stay as close as we can to something that feels safe and not challenging. We tend to circle the wagons thinking that that will keep those of us on the inside secure from everything that feels strange. We divide the world, don't we, into good guys and bad guys. But this way of living and this way of believing, well, there's very little love in it and very little freedom. Jesus says he is the gate. And so I wonder, it made me wonder, what's the purpose of a gate? And the purpose for having a gate is to create an opening a gate allows us to travel not only into, but beyond a barrier. Jesus says, I am the gate. And when he does, it's his way of inviting us both in and out. Jesus is telling us here that he is our sanctuary. He is our place where we know that we are known and loved and protected. But Jesus is the gate who also leads us out into the world, a world where there is beauty and nourishment and complexities and also real threats. It's important to remember for us, I think, that Jesus says that he is the gate, which means that we are not the gate. Gatekeeping is not our job. Because Jesus is the gate, he is our way through all of the carefully constructed walls that we place between ourselves and others. Historians teach us that shepherds in Jesus' day, that they often placed themselves, their own bodies, across the openings of their sheep pens, right in the gate, 
especially at night or during threatening times. They literally were offering up their bodies for the sake of the flock. Jesus is the shepherd who lays down his life for us, and the one who lays down his life for us leads us also into this world that God so loves. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are gates, the gate through which we enter into this world and engage it with Jesus' kind of love. This passage from John ends with Jesus stating his purpose. He said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Our tendency is to hear the word abundance and think it means material things. For some Christians and much of contemporary American culture, we interpret abundant life to mean the good life, a good life of material things and financial security and a nice lifestyle. We tend to hear abundance and we think it means that we need more, that we need to somehow have more or be more. And of course, in our consumer culture, all of that can be purchased someplace. And we all do need things. But abundance of life, this abundance that Jesus talks about, an abundance of things does not lead to the abundant life that Jesus gives. What Psalm 23 imagines and what Jesus calls us to is a life abundant not in material terms, but in relationship terms. An abundant life is lived in the presence of God and in right relationship with others. I read a story this week by Craig Greenfield, who was living in impoverished Cambodia in a community there during the COVID-19 pandemic. And during the national lockdown, when people were unable to get out and earn wages, some people in his community put up a sign and a table And that sign on the table said in Khmer, those who have extra, please add to the table. And those who need help, help yourselves. And then they took a photo of the table and the sign with a hashtag and they tagged their friends on on social media and they issued a community table challenge. And before long, hundreds of community tables were popping up all over the country. In a time of uncertainty and scarcity, a spirit of sharing and generosity moved through these communities. And in an interview, the author remarked, when we speak of community spirit, I think of that as the Holy Spirit stirring. No matter where we are in this world, it's good to look after each other. It's good to belong to a flock. That sounds to me a whole lot like Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me, my cup overflows. In God's presence and providing in Jesus, the risen one, we are given the gift of abundant life. And this abundance from God isn't found in keeping ourselves safe and well-fed, but it comes from sharing God's abundance, God's welcome with all. Recently, you heard United member Alexis Maduna share how when she was a college student, away from home and new to Grand Forks, she and a group of friends did some church shopping. And they landed here at United Lutheran Church and they stayed because they found here and Alexis is still here because they found a community of welcome and a community of support in our congregation. She told us also that United has now formed a welcoming core group. And the purpose of that group is to explore how we welcome people to this community of faith, how we create a safe space here, particularly for those who haven't always felt welcome or safe in church. Because, friends, so many folks have seen the gates of our churches, the doors of our churches, as closed to them. 
This core team is inviting you to share your story with them. What is it that makes you feel welcome here? They want to hear those stories. And we believe that those stories, your stories of welcome, will serve as a beginning point for us imagining together how to more fully share God's welcome to all. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the gate. His entire ministry and the work of his disciples following the resurrection, it's about throwing open that gate and inviting others into the abundant life of the risen one. On the very first Easter, those disciples, where were they? They'd locked themselves away in a room behind closed doors, thinking that that was the best route, the safest route, that they could keep themselves secure there. But Jesus, the risen one, he burst through those locked doors. He offered them peace, and then he sent them into this world of ours, this world of beauty and sorrow, to share the good news that God's abundance is for all. Friends, our lives in this world are full of challenge and grief, but we are not without good news. We are never without good news. The Lord is our shepherd. We have everything we need. Jesus, the good shepherd, the risen one, lives to give us abundant life. Together, may we set God's table and open the gates. Amen. Beloved in Christ, please stand as we join in confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us into your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when other voices threaten to overpower us. Gracious God, you are the gate who opens a way for all to enter and for us to go forth and to serve you. God of mercy, 
receive our prayer. The green pastures, the still waters, the dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. God of mercy, receive our prayer. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people and of all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. God of mercy, receive our prayer. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way. Especially this day, we pray for those of our community in need. We remember before you, O Lord, Manny Olson, Carol Collette, Nicolette Carvu, Mariah Kleiner, Robert Turner, David Homestead, John Hansen, Stephanie Vested, uh, the aunt of Becky Vakic, and the families of Ginny Davis and Lila Jane Nelson and Suellen Bateman. God of mercy, receive our prayer. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flock, provide protection for refugees from fighting in Sudan, victims of domestic violence, those who are in prison, and all who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. God of mercy, receive our prayer. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Especially we remember Jenny Davis, Suellen Bateman, and Lila Jane Nelson. Be with those who mourn and give them hope and the promise of resurrection. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. You may be seated at this time. We receive our offering. Would you please stand as we join in our offering song?
Gracious God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, in the pouring of this wine, pour out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself away, away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And so we join in praise and thanksgiving, and we remember. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all are welcome. You may be seated, and the ushers will direct you forward. And with those assisting with communion, come forward at this time.
Congregation, please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of all who raised, from dead, raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in God's new creation. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. We close our worship this morning with hymn number 789 in your red hymnals, Savior Like a Shepherd Leads. Thank you.